Oh, hello and welcome. So if you're in Kota Kinabalu and you're wanting to know more about the culture, local culture, then why not come to here, my Mari cultural village where I am. In this cultural village, you'll be introduced to various traditional homes from Sabah's five major ethnic communities, the Bajau, the Lundaye, Murut, Rungus, and Dusun. Here, you can experience the daily routine of traditional Sabahan life, like using blowpipe, starting fire using bamboo, enjoying local treats, and so on. The first thing that you will see when walking in are the traditional houses. Each tribe has their own unique housing style, but it can be generally divided into either a single detached unit or a log house. Overall, they have a similar general layout. Typically comes with at least three rooms, one for the parents, one for the grandparents, one top section for the precious daughters, the sons, they can sleep anywhere, a general living room and kitchen either on the inside or outside. And for the longhouses, they are a bit special. They have a corridor outside of each family home and that place is where people socialize and gather. When they have a free time, they will conduct an alcohol making session or tapai making as they were called, particularly to the Dusun Murut tribe. To make one, just follow this easy step. Get a yeast and a half cooked rice, then crush the yeast and sprinkle on the rice. Mix them well and once they're done, place the mixed rice in the tempuyan. The process usually takes at least 3 months or more. And after 3 months or so of fermentation, extract the liquid from the mixed rice through filtering and the liquid from it is called lihing. As for the leftover rice, instead of throwing away, it is used in the second process to make montoku, which is a distilled tapai with alcohol content at around 17% or higher. Right, so this is lihing. Uh, it's a typical rice, uh, local rice wine from the Dusu tribe. So they say it's a bit sweet and not very strong in the alcohol content. So, mm, sweet. A little bit of fragrance and I love it. I'm gonna have a second. Yes, early morning, I'm drinking a lot. I start drinking, not drinking a lot. And next to this one is the Montoku. So, Montoku is actually like a soju, a stronger version, distilled version of a rice wine. So, this is what you bring out the big guns, that's what they call, if you're gonna celebrate something else. Something. Ooh. Yep, a bit strong, but this one is a, uh, they already put it on rocks, a bit <coughs> diluted, but still a bit strong. Ah, drinking in the morning is always a welcoming thing and it can boost productivity. But having alcohol is not the same without this. Yes, honey. In this land, honey is cultivated from Kululut bee, a type of stingless bee that is commonly found in this country. Right, this is Kululut, the native honey. So you can see here, they have the honey nest just next to it. These are stingless honey. The honey is less sweet, more akin to sour, but still a bit sweet. So, cheers. Mm. Yeah, uh, not too sweet, but at the same time, not too sour. A bit of a bitterness. So I guess this is a raw honey. They have this a slightly bitterness that probably relates to because they are a bit more, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I'm not an expert on honey, but yeah, something like this. Honey, honey. This uh, is honey. Yes, and apparently my friend here is drunk, think this is honey. So, cheers. Woo, sweet as well. <laughs> Alright, with those honey and booze inside me, I'm totally ready for the next important activity, fire starting. Unlike today, in the olden days, when anyone need light for the night or to cook something, you need fire. And that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, well, blow. Yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes! Uh, what, what, what? <coughs> no, 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 please don't misunderstand. Okay, I give up. <laughs> it looks so easy when he did it. <laughs> But turns out, in ancient times, this is women who do it, a uh, housewife. So imagine mothers doing this every day. So you can imagine back in the days, the women are quite pretty strong, so don't mess with them. Well, judging from my awesome performance, if I were transport back in time, I might not be able to survive the first night. So, to show you all how it's truly done, let the pro demonstrate. <laughs> 
Insert the shredded bamboo skin into the rubbing zone. Rub it casually. Once the smoke is out, blow it gently to spread the flames. And voila! Fire! 15 seconds, that's all it took to light up the fire. So, after the intensive arm exercise, we move on to another equally physical demanding activity specifically for the legs. Here, we are introduced to the traditional dance of Lansaran, where one must have the strength to jump up high on a bouncy wooden trampoline to reach a pinata like box called Kinkilat on the ceiling. This is performed during important festivities like weddings and the gift board for the festivities are then tied on the Kinkilat and participants will try their best to win the prize. And since that looks super easy, I think I can do it on my first try. <laughs> Okay, maybe not. It's alright. Practice make perfect. Just like baking cakes, you bake until the cake tastes like a cake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> three, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Nice, nice, Okay, last one. Last one, <laughs> last one, okay. Oh, else I'm not going home. <laughs> ah, so close. Just few more inches and I could have touched it. But sometimes you have to accept it. Maybe your true calling is something else. And probably that something else is this. A blowpipe. Yes, a traditional hunting tool, a simple but elegant weapon of its time. At the hands of an experienced hunter, this balloon is at its mercy. And seeing his magnificent act, I believe point and shoot is my game. This is the ancient hunting blowpipe, and this is the ammo. In actual hunt in the past, they used venom from snake to coat the tip and paralyze kill its prey. So this is how you do it. You insert it into the tip, but don't let it fall into it. Just hold it here, and then just very tuck it in. And then you stabilize your aim using whatever sixth sense you're holding. I might miss, I'm an amateur, so <laughs> Good luck to me. <gasps> oh dear. Okay. Unfortunately, the first shot missed, but don't worry. I still got two more. Right. Second chance. Ooh. Oh, what do you know? Lucky me. <laughs> Lucky indeed, something that I can do with confidence the next time I have the chance. Well, all this activity made me a bit hungry, and just coincidentally, not far from where I am, a small hut that serves cakes exists, so we went. This is Kuei Jala, a triangle shaped cake that is made from just flour and sugar. The interesting part is that they use a coriander to drizzle the batter on hot oil so it can be folded over to form the triangle shape. And just. Mm. Crispy, easily uh, detachable, and yeah, sweet. Not too sweet, but just right. Mm. But a bit oily. <laughs> When there's something to eat, of course, there's bound to be something to drink. Complementing this kueh jala is this hot drink, pandan ginger. Right, so now we are having the pandan ginger. So pandan is a leaf, leafy plant that they use it to make into many things that uh, people in here and also the whole country uses. Drinks and snacks. So in this case, it's a simple song. Leaf in hot boiling water and then with some ginger, you have a pandan ginger. It's good for remove, remove ex excess moist inside your body at the cheek, so it makes your body more better. And also in ancient times, there's no um, like heater, so this this is what they drink to uh, to keep it cold, uh, warm during the night time. So cheers. Mm mmm, tasty, tasty. With those two refreshments, I feel rejuvenated once again, and just in time for the last activity, enjoying the performance of the local tribes. Yes, nothing feels more entertaining than witnessing the performance of the traditional dance. For some reason, it just draw me in. I mean, just listen to this. And before long, something in me made me excited and wanting to go up to the stage and dance with them. Well, maybe they are mind readers because the next dance, they asked the audience whether we want to come up and join them. Of course, I did.
following the rhythm is actually quite tricky, but it's not impossible. With some practice, I think I can put it off just like that. And now let's see how a professional does it. There's only one word to describe it, amazing. So with this, our My My journey has come to an end. Woo. Hi guys, it was very tired. We've been inside there for a few hours, but hopefully by the end of this video, you all learn a bit more and have a deeper understanding about Sabah's indigenous culture and the way of their traditional lifestyle of how it is. So I hope to see you all in our next video. Ciao, ciao.